Okay guys, I've got the Seal Wing G1500 out here today in the 1.1 meter wingspan configuration. I haven't flown it in this configuration yet. I expect it will be a little faster, it'll be a little more aerobatic. I won't have the slow flight capability or the glide that it has in the 1.5 meter configuration. But we, I wanted to test it out and see which configuration I prefer to fly it in because I do like to do aerobatics with my planes no matter what kind of plane it is, including a, a long-range FPV glider. <laughs> so, so let's grab the transmitter and take it out here and launch it. We've got wind of 4 to 7 this morning. So we'll see how that goes. I think I'm going to launch it over here into the wind in front of the truck and then walk back out to the road. Uh, on a 1.5 meter configuration, it launched really well at about 50% throttle with a good chuck. I think I will power it up just a, just a tick more on this launch. But let's see if we can get it in the air. Takes off nicely. throttle back all right and I'm gonna walk out here to the road while I'm flying this I wasn't sure if I should tone down the ailerons on this with the shorter wingspan I didn't I still have the same amount of throws and the same amount of expo that I had before I'm trying to walk and not trip over anything here powering down a little bit man I forget I forgot how just how much power this plane has on 4s lose a little altitude Feels pretty good, even with the same throw. Really wants to climb going into that wind. Yeah, ailerons are definitely more responsive in the roll. picking up now. I can't get over how much power that has. Yeah, it's all the way back. Little wind up there, a little wind up there. <laughs> no, that is uh, <laughs> tons of power. Definitely rotates uh, in the roll axis a lot better with the 1.1 meter configuration than it does in the 1.5 meter configuration. Yeah, it really does. I think if I if I continue to fly it in this configuration I may tone the 
the dual rate down a little bit on the ailerons. But um, so far, pretty nice. Isn't that awesome? Man. Alright, let's throttle back a little bit again. you guys think of it in the 1.1 uh, meter configuration here. Not bad, huh? Very maneuverable. Got to add a little bit of elevator in the turns when I'm making those tight turns. that not a bad stall turn I don't think the stall turn was any better with the shorter wingspan than it was in the 1.5 uh, meter configuration I think I may have to attempt to land this on this little dirt lane this morning um, uh, considerable wind coming out of that direction It's not bad slow flight capability. It's just, you know, that's a, that's a pu pretty big reduction in wingspan for this plane. And it's handling this wind pretty well. Look at that big huge loop. <laughs> I don't I don't know which way I prefer it yet. I'm gonna have to put some more flights on this 1.1 meter configuration to see. Okay, so uh that's gonna be iffy, but I'm gonna try and bring it in into the wind on this little dirt lane here, right across the road. Let's see if we can get it slowed down enough and not hit the truck. Don't want to hit the truck. All right, here we come. Yeah, that wasn't pretty, <laughs> but it's but it's down. All right, so handles excellent in the 1.1 meter configuration. It's definitely more responsive in the roll axis than it is in the 1.5 meter axis. Doesn't have as good a slow flight capability, of course, with, with the much less wing area than what it has in the 1.5 meter. The stall turn to me looked about the same. Now, I don't know if the wind was contributing to, you know, slowing down that rotation up there. But um, I didn't see it, it didn't seem any faster in the stall turn in the 1.1 meter configuration than it did in the 1.5 meter configuration. Um, I it's definitely faster and I was really having to back out of the throttle more I think on the on this configuration than the larger wingspan probably because there's a little more drag to it. But um, anyway, I will meet you back at the hangar because I also wanted to discuss 
um, flying this plane on a 3S LiPo rather than a 4S LiPo. I had a couple questions about that. And I was going to bring it out and test it on a 3S LiPo, but I want to tell you what I discovered in the process. So I'll see you back at the hangar. So I thought that flight went very well, even though it was fairly windy out. Um, the slow flight capability on the 1.1 meter configuration is not bad at all. And I, I do think that uh, I do think that it was faster with the 1.1 meter configuration because I had to back off the throttle more than I normally do, and I think that's just because of the additional drag created by the 1.5 meter configuration wingspan. So it, it's just a, it's an awesome plane. You know, it's very very maneuverable, tons of power, and I love being able to fly it. You know, aerobatically. But I wanted to also talk about uh, 3S LiPo in this plane. Now, the, I don't have any extremely large 3S LiPos. Uh, I have some older 3S 2200 milliamp hour 40C LiPos that weigh 192 grams. So I put that battery in and moved it as far forward as I possibly could, and it was extremely tail heavy. So then I took off the standard canopy and I put on the camera shelf canopy and then I took my run my old run cam action cam which weighs approximately 42 grams and I moved it as far forward on that camera mount canopy as I could and I could just barely get the CG maybe maybe it was still just slightly tail heavy but I was going to go ahead and take it out and fly it in that configuration just to see. Because after I put my two millimeter um, spacers underneath the two bottom motor mounts to increase the thrust angle on the motor and give it a better thrust angle, that gave me enough space for a nine inch prop. So my plan was to take that out in that configuration with a nine inch prop. It was a nine by four or nine by five nine by five prop the problem that I ran into and I don't know if you get how well you can see this but with this eight by four prop that uh, and that's a low profile lock nut that's on it it's not a standard lock nut that is a low profile nut the low it is just barely fully engaged on the threads on the motor shaft so the problem that I ran into with that nine by five prop was that it wouldn't I couldn't get the I couldn't get the lock nut on far enough to engage the nylock. And you definitely want to be able to do that because the nut tightens in the same direction that the the prop spins. So you've got to be able to get that nylock engaged. So so I went through all the props I had and I found a nine by three eight prop. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm in business now. It's going to be a lower pitch prop, but my my experience has been that with a with a uh, larger diameter prop with a with less pitch and it will generally produce more thrust and pull fewer amps than a smaller prop with more pitch in it. So I thought, okay, I've got that nine by three eight prop. I'm in business. Same problem. I ran into the same problem. The nine by three eight prop, the hub was just too thick. I couldn't get the, the low profile lock nut engaged. I'm not sure since this is just a four inch pitch prop, this eight by four, and the nylock is just completely engaged on the motor shaft. I don't even know if you can put an eight inch prop with more pitch and get it on here and get the nylock fully engaged. And like I said, you definitely want to do that. So if you're interested in flying it on a 3S LiPo, you may end up having to replace the motor, you know, to get a motor with a longer shaft so that you can put a 9-inch prop on it. I think that if you could put a 9-inch prop on this, and you can, except for the motor shaft, there's, there's clearance if you add those 2-millimeter shims. To, you've got space to put a 9-inch prop on if I was going to fly it on 3S, I would put a 9x5 prop on it, and I would run it on a 3S. But you're going to need you're going to need about 225, 230 grams on the front of that. Now, whether that's a lipo or like me, a combination of the lipo and an action cam, 
but whatever you do, you're going to need about 230 grams on the front of this to be able to get the CG on any battery, you know, including a 3S. But I think that with the power that it shows on a 4S LiPo, I think that it would fly fine with a 9-inch prop on a 3S. Now, I might go ahead and take it out and just test it with a 3-inch, uh, oh, 3-inch, with a 3S LiPo with this standard prop on it, just to see, because, I mean, it should, I would think it would, it would produce enough thrust to cruise around with it. I don't think you're going to be able to, to climb at a high rate with this 8x4 prop on a 3S, I don't think that you're going to be able to do much in the way of aerobatics with it, but you could probably just cruise around with it. So if you're just wanting to use it for a long range FPV camera platform, then you might be able to get away on a 3S with this standard prop that's already on it. But I will try to make time to take it back out again, and I think I will put it back in the 1.5 meter configuration. Put, uh, put my my heaviest 3S light boat in it and put my camera on there so I can get the CG and take it out and see if it will cruise around with just the standard prop. But I would definitely prefer to have a 9-inch prop on it with a 3S light boat. That's just me. But anyway, fantastic play. Uh, it flies great in the 1.1 meter configuration or the 1.5 meter configuration. I want to put some time on it and some calmer wind in the 1.1 meter configuration just to see which I prefer. And then I'll let you know. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.